Welcome back folks, this is Cowboy V2 again. So today I'm just gonna quickly go over what I think about this Simpson 4200 pressure washer that I picked up a couple of years ago. Seems like, you know, videos after a fair amount of use are appreciated out there. And so, yeah, so I'll be uh, covering a bunch of different uh, stuff that I had considered when I was leading up to the purchase and some frustrations that I had. And then uh, what I like and don't like and things that I'd change or did change and then also what I use the what I use the pressure washer for so let's get into it all right so first off I want to go over uh, my experience when buying this thing um, you know with some equipment that you'll pick up online I do a lot of my shopping online it's pretty straightforward it's obvious who to go with and the products are in stock and you know it's just you do a quick little bit of research and then you spend the money and you're done pressure washers don't seem to be like that and so um, originally I was looking for a uh, uh, hot water pressure washer and basically what I found is that uh, barring the uh, off brands and the stuff that you can get from you know questionable Chinese sellers um, there wasn't a lot of certainty in anything under about five thousand dollars in the quality of what you get there were a lot of failed pump units and burners and you know leaks and all kinds of stuff and then when I did finally end up choosing a, a unit on Hotsey because of emissions regulations or some kind of, you know, deal with a, a dealer geographic regions or something, they couldn't ship the unit that I wanted to me. And so I was kind of frustrated with that, mainly because, you know, on the ranch here, and you've probably seen these in the other videos, if you're, uh, if you're a subscriber and if you haven't, well, I deal with a lot of heavy machinery and just you know, tractors and stuff keeping up the ranch. And so, you know, you're dealing with caked on old greasy stuff, really heavy duty grime. Uh, this isn't homeowner type stuff. It's just kind of a different need for a pressure washer. And so that's why I was looking at a hot unit. And anyway, after uh, uh, trying unsuccessfully several times to get a decent hot water pressure washer for under $5,000, I ended up giving up and I started looking at the heavy duty cold pressure washers. And that's when I stumbled across this unit. So this is the uh, Simpson uh, 4200 PSI, four gallons per minute pressure washer. Um, my understanding is this is targeted at kind of a commercial user. It's got the Honda GTX 390 engine, which is a, kind of a workhorse uh, staple in commercial machinery. Let's see, 4200 PSI, you know, it's enough that it can get kind of dangerous. I guess really any pressure washer you got to kind of watch out for. But in my case, it was kind of, you know, it was it was high enough that I had hoped that it would actually be useful for blasting grease off, of, you know, tractors and that sort of thing. And so anyway, you know, I've had it for like two years now. And so I have an opinion. So we'll get into that now. First things first, uh, considering the reviews that I had read when I was considering which uh, unit to purchase, uh, the most common mode of failure in basically any pressure washer, regardless of whether it was hot or cold, was the uh, pump head itself would fail. And very often, super often, uh, the user is blaming the uh, quality of the manufacturer. Now, I haven't had a whole lot of different pressure washers. I'm not one of these commercial cleaning guys. I'm just a regular user on a ranch. Um, and so I can just give you uh, the opinion about this unit uh, in my experience on this sort of thing. It's really easy to forget to prime the pump. And I suspect that that's the largest uh, contributor to premature pump failure that uh, that uh, they'll encounter. And the manufacturer may end up, you know, that may be the, uh, the thing that they acknowledge most in their service uh, is basically that uh, when you fire this unit up, the, um, the pump head, regardless of the style, it's cooled via circulating water flow. And if you fire it up dry, not only does it not get that cooling, but it also doesn't get the lubricant. Uh, the water acts as kind of a natural lubricant in the pump unit itself. And so in pretty short order, pumping a dry pump is going to kill the, uh, kill the unit. And I'll be straightforward with you guys. I've even done that myself with this. Uh, usually it <laughs> ends with me dashing to the faucet to, to turn on the water or run over to the off switch and shut it off, hopefully before destroying the pump. And so far that hasn't been the case. But number one, doesn't matter what unit you have, don't forget to prime the pump. Basically uh, hook it up to your water, turn on the faucet, uh, pull the trigger on the, the handle, 
and run some water through there until you hear you know air popping and the air bubbles going through and at that point you're probably safe to fire it up but you don't want to run one of these pump units dry okay so the the next thing on this particular unit and the simpsons simpsons a really well-known household name for whatever reason though they chose to go with uh you know kind of maybe a little bit of an iffy uh, a uh, iffy hose assembly. I'm not sure if they've remedied this. You know, this is a two-year-old unit, but you can basically see if you look in there on that quick coupler there, uh, it, um, you know, it's, it's rusting. It's only two years old. Uh, it was rusting pretty much right away. Um, until it builds up some pressure, it actually leaks from right there. And then the other thing that uh, a lot of users were reporting on is this jacket over the braided sleeving. It looks like a really heavy duty assembly, but I guess the jacket over the sleeving, you can see it's yellowing on mine and uh, UV degrades it really fast. And so then that would fail. And of course, once the uh, stainless wire is exposed, uh, depending on the alloy of uh, stainless, uh, they used it may or may not uh, have uh, reasonable corrosion resistance and then the whole thing's toast. So you might consider upgrading the hose. I haven't used it enough for it to fail outright. I also store it indoors. And so with a commercial user, it may be treated a little bit harder, but um, that's one of the biggest things, complaints that I had. Okay, so something else uh, regarding uh, changes that I made to the design. This uh, hose reel, if you bundle up the hose just right, it'll, all of it'll fit on there. Uh, this is you know, like a 25 or 50 foot hose. It's pretty long. It's quite a lot to fit on here, but it does work. Um, I noticed that there's these hooks here on the bracket and there wasn't anything provided from the factory on that. Now, I don't know if it's, I was short uh, shipped or what the deal was, but basically what I ended up doing is taking a piece of bungee cord here. Uh, you can see this right here. And uh, I cut it to length to make effectively a giant rubber band and and I wired the ends together. Let's see if you can see that okay. And so now, if I put the tied together end underneath the, um, the kind of shield here, and then I pull it over the bundle, you can see I can hook it into those notches, and now the hose is retained on the bracket. Without this, every time I would move the pressure washer, uh, you know, the bundle was coming off of here. This is kind of trivial stuff. If you get a decent quality pressure washer, you're going to tolerate a lot. But, you know, for me, dragging the thing around is kind of, a, you know, it's a little bit of a chore if it's not easy to maneuver. Um, another thing, one storage on this unit, you know, basically that's what you got going on there. If you don't have that handle in there, just right, or you kick it while you're dragging it around, um, it doesn't really hold very well. Uh, Simpson, if you're watching this, Definitely an upgrade there. Easy opportunity for a snap-in spring-loaded clip thing there. Um, I could come up with a ton of different ways to deal with that, even if it were just straight up a, a scabbard, almost like a you know what you put a rifle into. That's a weak part in the design, and it would be cheap to uh, to improve. Okay, so what else regarding durability? Another common thing. I think this is less of an issue with these uh, pressure washers, but you know the manual goes over this and and reading on forums you know, things that cause failure, failure to change the pump oil, uh, uh, early on. I think it was the first five or 10 hours, or maybe it was the first hour. I don't remember. It's in the manual, but anyway, the point with that is that, um, when these pumps are new, they're not, you know, they're not built with the same quality control that say, uh, like a Honda engine or some, you know, some, uh, high performance, you know, motorsports thing would be built in. And so when they assemble them, there's going to be little bits of burrs and flashing and, you know, kind of high spots on the, uh, the machined bores and the pistons and whatnot that are going to need to wear in. And the thing with that is when it wears in, it's going to shed a little bit of metal. And that's not necessarily a problem. However, there's no filter on these pumps uh, in the oil sump. There's no filter. There's no strainer. Uh, my, my understanding is they're basically all just uh, splash lubricated. And so if you shed metal and then it's continually reintroduced through those uh, bearing surfaces and the reciprocating assemblies, you're going to end up with failure. So uh, second to not ever forgetting to prime the pump, uh, change the oil early on. That's going to be super important. You can see there, I, you know, I like to write on stuff. Um, it just makes it easy for me to remember when, when I've changed stuff, absolutely change the oil. That'll, that'll help uh, reduce the chances that you end up with a unit that's uh, uh, dead after short order. Um, this particular unit, I will say one thing. I'm not sure what the reason for this is uh, regarding the uh, oil. 
anyway there's a you can see a little bit of residue around the sight glass there you can say the oil level is uh, where it's supposed to be however there's some residue on the outside and i it seems to me that i remember seeing some droplets on the floor uh this unit does let's see yeah it does um does seem to leak a little tiny bit uh not sure if there's an o-ring in there that's not so great or what the deal is uh, apparently it hasn't been enough to cause an issue but it's something to keep an eye on and absolutely you want to keep an eye on that oil level you run it too low and uh, uh, you know again the, the pump heads toast and these things are kind of hot rods so you got to take that into consideration when you're uh, you know considering maintenance and, and use on them uh, they're not they're not going to be like a hammer where you can abuse them and do whatever so um, let's see okay so what I use it for we'll run over that now Okay, yeah, actually one more thing before I uh, forget about it. Um, starting this thing up. So just like any other small, uh, you know, Honda or Honda clone engine, it's going to be the standard procedure. Uh, turn the uh, fuel lever on, turn the choke on, turn the ignition on, and then uh, you'll basically pull the cord. It'll usually uh, either fire up from there and kind of stumble uh, because the choke's on, or it'll fire a few times and then uh, shut off at that point. Um, you'll uh, shut off the choke and then either restart it or if it's still running then it'll it'll uh, run like normal and then that's that's basically the extent of it uh, there is one uh, catch with this unit though as soon as that engine starts to rev up it's going to build pressure and when it's first starting up it has to fight against that pressure uh, in order to you know come up to speed the challenge with that is that the engine, you know, coming from a cold start doesn't always uh, have the oomph necessary to overcome that, the, you know, pre overpressure bypass. And so it'll stall out. And so what uh, I'll often find myself doing is each time it doesn't start, I'll go over to the handle, release some pressure, and then uh, start the procedure over again. Uh, worst case scenario, if it's uh, uh, particularly problematic or I want to... Uh, bypass that whole uh, thing. I'll have somebody that's uh, nearby hold onto the handle in the open position spraying in a safe direction and I'll fire it up and that way I'm not meeting that same resistance. Uh, it generally always starts though. These uh, Honda GX series uh, engines are pretty much the most reliable thing out there even you know in my experience over the Briggs and Stratton and Kawasaki stuff. So top-notch engine, industrial quality pump, uh, pump units good here. Um, I'll show you what I use it for now. All right, so this is uh, what I'm going to be washing today. This is a perfect example of what I'm using this pump for. Um, it's not a piece of heavy machinery, but it is a piece of greasy machinery nonetheless. And this is m the main reason why I wanted to use a uh, hot pressure washer when I first started looking for one. You can see uh, down in here, you know, we've got uh, some greasy bolts and like uh, like residue caked with uh, dust from the barn. And, you know, there's mud and spire webs and all kinds of junk there. And so uh, this isn't really anything crazy, but this is what I do all the time. And so, and so we'll go ahead and uh, get this thing cleaned up. Okay, a couple of final items. Uh, you'll notice there that I shut off the fuel uh, to kill the unit. Uh, this is something I always uh, preach on uh, outdoor small power equipment. One of the number one uh, killers of a, uh, you know, of a uh, uh, progress filled day is a small engine that won't start and messing with the carburetor and pulling out the starting fluid and all that other nonsense. Uh, in my experience, most commonly caused by bad gas shellacked in the carburetor. So if you're not using your equipment every single uh, day or at least uh, weekly or at the very uh, most monthly, um, I suggest that you always run your carburetor out of fuel. 
And so the way that I do that is I shut off the fuel and I let it run until it dies. There's nothing left in the carb. It's not going to get shellacked up and you'll be a lot happier next time you go to use your equipment. It's my little uh, tip for the day. Okay, so a couple of other items. Um, whenever I'm done with this thing, I like to spray it off. Uh, it sits in the barn. Everything around here, especially through the summer, gets dusty. And so uh, I like to keep my equipment clean, but I'm not putting a cover on it. And so right before I finish up, I always spray it off. Just do the best I can to uh, not get it into any uh, critical places. I'm not trying to blow high pressure water through gaskets or anything like that. So kind of stand back a little bit. Uh, secondly, uh, for most of the things that I'm washing, I have to be a little bit careful that I'm not stripping paint or uh, blowing uh, stickers off. And so I'll generally use uh, the 40 degree nozzle or maybe the 25 at most. You can get down to 15 degrees or just a straight stream. That straight stream you could pretty much cut wood with. At 4200 PSI, I mean, all you'd have to do is add a little abrasive and you'd be water jet cutting. Uh, most applications, barring bare steel, uh, really don't want to use that. Um, and so I'm using a wider uh, pattern, especially in this case, I'm blowing dusty grease off of this uh, machine, and that seems to work out pretty good. Okay, so going over the you know effect of the uh, 40 degree nozzle. Uh, on this machine. It's an old pump. Paint is oxidized and so stuff sticks on it pretty good. Um, regardless, it all pretty much came off. This is not a hot unit and I didn't use any degreaser or anything like that, so that worked out pretty good. I'm just getting this uh, pump ready to sell, doing a little spring cleaning in the barn there. And so uh, last item I'll do is I'll just check the oil, make sure I didn't spray anything uh, through any of the gasket surfaces. Uh, I'll check the fuel tank, make sure I don't see anything, you know, any bubbles of water below the fuel. And this thing will pretty much be ready to go. Same thing, by the way, with this pump regarding the, um, you know, preventing the carburetor from gumming up. I uh, shut off the gas and run it out when I'm done with it. So uh, that makes a wrap for today. If you have any questions regarding this uh, unit two years in, yes, I'm definitely happy in it, uh, with it. I would buy it again. Uh, Simpson makes quality equipment. Um, no question about that. Only a few little minor changes and it'd be top notch. Yeah, like I said, any questions, put them in the comments. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching.